In Photoshop, we can do amazing things with blending modes. Now, there is 27 of them, so believe me, it can get a little bit confusing, but I promise today I'm gonna to keep it really nice and simple for you. I'm gonna take eight of those blending modes and show you how you can use those while you're editing your landscape images. Now, you will need a basic understanding of layers and masks, so if you don't have that, can I suggest you watch my layers and masks tutorial here on YouTube? I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Righto, let's get going. Hey everyone, this is Dean and today we're talking about blending modes. Now the eight modes we're going to go through today are dark and multiply, light and screen, overlay soft light, difference, color and luminosity. Now I'm going to timestamp this down in the description for you so you can jump to any of those at any stage. Let's get into Photoshop and get cracking. Now firstly you're going to need your layers palette up. So if your layers palette is not showing, just come up here to window and then come down to layers and that'll bring this up. Now our first blend mode is darken and think of this one as darker. So what it does is it looks at the blend layer and then it looks at the layer completely underneath, uh, directly underneath and then it compares the pixels and it only keeps the darker pixels. So it's very good for getting rid of or for overlaying white you know, very clear white pixels. So when you have a sky that's fairly blown out and you can see this is all very white, not a lot of detail in there, then it's going to be very easy to drop a sky into here. So what I've done with this one is I've brought a sky in. So I'll just show you that. So this is just a sky that I brought in from another image and I've roughly sized it to, um, to cover the area that we need to cover. Okay, so it's sitting there. And now if I change this blend mode here to darken, then it will keep the darker pixels and get rid of the lighter pixels. So as you can see, I'll just zoom in here. It does a really good job on, on edges. But you can see there's a bit of grey stuff in here. So that's caused because there are some tones in here that are fairly light. So the sky has covered those. So this blend mode is it, it's very good for when you have just a clear horizon. You're just dropping a sky in. When you have something like this, what I suggest you do is you make a selection of it and cut it out and then lay it on top. So I've done one here. So you can see when I turn that on and off, that's now just bringing back in the, um, I'll just turn these off so you can see what that is. So this is just a selection of the, of the background layer and you can do it afterwards. You can just come back to your background layer and make a selection of that, cut it out and then bring it to the top of the stack. So that's the darken blend mode. So the next blend mode is multiply. So multiply is another darkening blend mode. Think of it as magnifying your darker tones. Some people describe it as putting two slides into a projector so everything goes darker. So it doesn't affect your lighter tones, it only affects your darker tones sort of from uh, your mid-tones onwards. So I use this one for creating vignettes. So what you would do is you, you would make a selection through here and cut out that as a layer that you want to darken, which is this bit here. So I've basically just selected the outside and feathered this fairly heavily. Okay, and then if we change the blend mode up here to multiply, you notice that that outer layer goes darker. So the outside of my image is now darker and being on a layer I can just feather that off to whatever I want and if it wasn't enough you can actually multiply that layer again and it gets darker still okay so that's multiply good for darkening darker tones now the next mode is lighten and this is the opposite to darken instead of calling it lighten they should have really called it lighter if you think of it as only keeping the lighter pixels so it looks at the layer and then it looks at the pixels directly underneath it and it only keeps the lighter pixels 
So very good for doing things like a logo here. I've got my logo, but it's on a, a black background. Okay, so by using the lighten mode, it gets rid of the black pixels and only keeps the white pixels. So a very quick, easy way of separating something off a, a dark or a black background. Screen blending mode is the complete opposite to the multiply blending mode. So multiply darkened our image, screen is going to lighten our image. So we can use it to lighten up areas. So if I just multiply this layer, so just Command J, and then change that blending mode to screen, and you see our foreground is much, much lighter. So how you would use this, well, I would suggest you would mask this, so you would apply a mask. So we've applied a mask, just fill that mask in with black, and then by selecting a brush, we would then paint in to lighten areas up. So I've got a fairly low opacity brush here. I'll just bring it up a bit so you can see what it's doing. So as I paint, it's then painting in that lighter area underneath. Okay, so that is screen. Now overlay and soft light, these are used a lot. And I've combined the two because they're basically the same, except soft light is just a little bit softer than how overlay works. So technically how, how this blending mode works is it leaves any, anything that's 50% gray, it leaves transparent, so it doesn't affect. And then anything above 50% gray, anything, sorry, anything darker than 50% gray, it will use the multiply blending mode so it'll make it darker and anything lighter than 50% gray it'll use the screen mode at 50% strength so it makes it lighter so it adds a lot of contrast um, normally a lot of contrast and a lot of color so there's a few different ways we can use it now I'll show you one way that is quite sneaky and that is so let's say i want to darken this rock but i want to darken it more with this dark tone here so i want to pick up this dark tone and continue it around here and i can't just darken here because it's going to pick up these colors and it won't be what i want so what we do is we add an empty layer and then we change our foreground color to this darker color in here the color that we want to replicate we change our blending mode of this layer to overlay. And then we're going to paint that color in on a brush. So we just select a select a brush, B for the brush tool on your keyboard. And we'll just drop the opacity. So I've got opacity about sort of 35%, flows at 40%. And then we just paint that in here. And that's now picking up this color from here and replicating that darker color. Okay, so you can do the same thing with a lighter color. If you wanted to continue this lighter color through here, we can just change that foreground color to that yellowy color. Okay, and then we just paint that color through here. So that's one way you can use overlay. So that's a, like a, a dodge and burn effect. So let me quickly show you a high pass filter because that uses the overlay blend mode. So we just duplicate our layer. If you're not sure of this high pass filter, it's used for sharpening. Just go to high pass. I'll just bring that down a little bit. So when we've applied that, the whole image is, is very gray, but you can see what it does on the edges is it darkens and lightens. Now, as I said, with the overlay mode, anything that's 50% gray becomes totally transparent. Everything in this image that's 50% gray will become transparent. Anything that's slightly darker or lighter will show through on the image below. And effectively what that is doing is darkening or lightening our edges, adding contrast to the edge, which relates to a little bit of sharpness or it appears to be sharpness. Okay, so that's how the overlay blending mode works with a high pass filter. 
Now this is a blending mode you may not have heard of or used before, it's called Difference and it's an excellent one for lining up layers. So if we have layers are out of alignment and we want to line them up again, then we use Difference. So I'll just show you what I've done here. We've got our background layer. If I just turn that off, I've made a selection and just cut this lamppost out. Okay, at the moment it's sitting in the exact position where it is. So let me just grab my move tool and I'm just going to move that selection out of place. So this is a very good one for compositing if you're doing composites um, or just if you have duplicated something, moved it, and then you need to line it up again. So what we do is this top layer here that we've cut out, we just change its blending mode to difference. And now we get this mirrored effect and we just use our move tool again and we just bring it down and move it back into place. And when it's perfectly in place, everything goes completely black. And now we know that it's exactly in the right spot. It's lined up and we just go back to normal and beautiful. There you go, lined up. So that's difference. Our next blending mode is color. So this is used in different ways. I'll show you one way. It's a very good one for adding a monotone effect to a black and white picture. Now, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. You could just add a layer on top and fill it with a color and then change the blend mode. But um, you're better off to use an adjustment layer and I'll show you why. So just come down here to this little icon here, create a new fill or adjustment layer and we go to solid color. Okay, and then we just pick a color, doesn't matter at the moment, we'll just leave it where it is. We go OK. So now we're going to change this blend mode at the top here to color. So when when we select color, what it's telling it to do is it's telling it to retain the luminosity of the bottom layer, but use the color in the top layer, if that makes sense. So when we go to color, we now still have our picture underneath, but it's laid the color on top. Okay, and you can change your opacity to obviously soften the effect. And the good thing when it's an adjustment layer is I can now click back into here, which brings my color palette up, and I can change that on the fly. So if I wanted a sepia look, I can pick the exact color that I want. You know, I can really, really fine tune it. So that looks pretty good there. So you would then go OK. Um, and there you go, that is the color mode. Okay, our final blending mode is luminosity, and this is one that I really love. How I use this is for when I add contrast to an image. So sometimes when you add contrast, especially to a sky, it'll add saturation to it. So it'll make that sky go a really sort of dark, bluey color, which I really don't like. Just let me show you an example. So we'll just duplicate that layer and let's just go and add a bucket load of contrast and you'll see what I mean, okay? So here we've added a heap of contrast, but it's also increased the saturation. I mean, look at the sky and the red down here in the rocks. If I turn that layer on and off, you can see that, yeah, we've added a lot of contrast, but we've also affected the color of the image as well. So what we do is we just add a contrast and we change the blending mode of that layer to luminosity. So now it's saying, don't, don't change the color, just change the luminosity values. Now when I turn that on and off, you can see that I've added a lot of contrast, but it hasn't thrown in all of that color saturation. There you go, folks. There are eight blending modes you can have a bit of a play with in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed that. If you're new to the channel and you liked what you saw today, then please feel free to subscribe hit that little bell next to it, and then that way I can let you know each time a new video comes out. Take care, folks, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.